So this is the second half of 6.1. So this is going to be slope fields and Euler's method. So for slope fields, what you're doing is you would be plugging in points into a differential equation. Now this one, that's a really big chart. You would not be asked to do this many points, but I'm just going to um, fill this one out with this many points. But usually if you had to do something like this on the AP test, it's usually going to be 9 or 12. So it's usually um, like a 3 by 3 square on a grid or it's going to be a 4 by 3. So that's why it's 9 or 12. It really depends, but it's probably not going to be this many. But what you're doing is you're plugging in different values, um, different x and y values. For this particular differential equation, there is no y in the differential equation. So really all you're doing is plugging in x. So this one is a little bit quicker, but if there is an x and a y, then it does take a little bit longer. So this one is just going to be negative 4 for all of these, and then negative 2, and then 0, 2, and 4. And then what you're doing when you're drawing a slope field is at these points that you plugged in, you are making a line segment that has this slope. So you want to make it a small enough line segment that it's not going to intersect other line segments on this grid and it doesn't need to be perfect. So really what they're looking for, um, if this shows up on a free response, so what I would be looking for if this happened to be on a test or quiz or something, is I'm looking for the general shape and I'm looking for are the slopes relatively steep, meaning if they're supposed to get steeper as you go up, as so as y increases, it should look like it's getting steeper. If they're supposed to be steeper as you go out away from the origin, then that's what it should look like. So those kinds of things are what I would be looking at for this type of problem. So I can see that when x is negative 2, there's a slope of negative 4. So you want it to be pretty steep. And you want all of these to be... The same. Um, I guess I didn't need to make it up to three. And then at negative one, it's going to be a little bit, it's still going to be relatively steep, but not as steep as this one. And maybe that's a little bit, I mean, that kind of looks like it's a slope of negative one, but that's okay because really all I want to see is that, is it less steep than this one? And then here it's going to be zero. And then here it's going to be basically the reflection of this one. And then this one's going to be steeper. So that would be your slope field. And if all you're being asked to do is create a slope field, then that's all you have to do. For this one, it also says to sketch the solution. So sketch Y. So it gives you a point that it goes through. We know it goes through the point 0, negative 1. And the solution is going to follow the shape of the slope field. So here I can see that it's going to look like a parabola. So I just draw this parabola. So for something like this in practice, you wouldn't want to make a slope field for something like this because we could um, actually find the solution to this one because I can just multiply by dx and then integrate both sides. So for something like this, you really wouldn't care about making a slope field. I'm doing this example because it's an easy one to compute all of the slopes and an easy one to be able to see what it's going to look like. But in general, the reason you would make a slope field is for something that you don't know how to actually solve. So if you wanted to see what the solution looks like, but you didn't have a way to solve the differential equation, you could make a slope field and that's going to show you the general shape of the solution. So for this one, we do have x and y. So there's going to be, um, I'm going to be plugging in x and y in, um, into this differential equation. Anywhere that y is equal to 0, that one is undefined because you're going to have 0 in the denominator. So what that means when you're making the slope field is it's going to be little vertical lines because you have a constant over 0, so that would be vertical. So don't put infinity for the slope. You not usually have to fill out this chart anyway. So if your scrap work has the slope as infinity, that's fine. Just remember that 
the slope can't actually equal infinity. So the slope would be undefined. So then here we have one, one half, one half, one fourth, zero, zero, negative one half, negative one fourth, negative one, and negative one half. And then we do the same thing. So we're putting the tiny little slopes on this grid. So anywhere that y is equal to zero, it's going to be uh, vertical. And then this one, so at negative two, one, that's a slope of one. I'm going to make it probably a little bit less steep than one because I know, oh, actually, no, these are going to be, I'm going to make it a little bit steeper than one because I know that here, when I'm at negative two, two, that one is going to need to be less steep. And so it just make you want to have the relative steepness. Um, and then at negative one, one, it's going to be the same as this one. And then one fourth, so it's getting even less steep over here. And then these are going to be zero, so horizontal. And then this is just going to be the reflection. Okay, so then based on the slope field, what type of equation do you think this would be? So if it doesn't give you a point that it goes through, you can't actually draw the solution. But let's say, for example, it goes through this point. I want to follow the shape of the slope field. So it's going to look something like that. So this would be um, an ellipse. It's only going to be a portion of an ellipse because it does need to be a function. So even if we had, I mean, we could have more slopes down here, um, but we, we do want the solution to be a function. So we would only want to include half of it. And we could also solve this differential equation. I could multiply by 2y and I could multiply by dx, integrate both sides, and you should get that this is going to be an ellipse. So again, in practice, this is one that we wouldn't necessarily do a slope field for. So what a slope field is, is basically, or the way you make it is you take a small piece of the linearization at that point. So a small piece of the tangent line that approximate the solution curve that passes through that particular point. So whatever point you plugged into the differential equation, that's the point that you want to make your tiny little tangent line. And then repeating this process over and over is called the slope field. So occasionally you do have ones on free response questions where you have to draw a slope field. It's not super common on the BC test. It's a little more common on AB, um, but it is pretty common in multiple choice questions. So you do occasionally see something like this. So you can do it by, I mean, kind of making a slope field, plugging in a couple points and seeing what's going to match the picture. The way that I usually do it is to look for trends so for example, if you look along the y-axis, so that's going to be when x is equal to zero, I can see that when y is positive, the slopes here are negative, and when y is negative, the slopes are positive. So I would want to pick something that has a negative coefficient in front of y. So for this one, I, I'm only left with e as my, I'm left with e as my only option. Sometimes that only lets you narrow it down to two or three. And so at that point, then you would need to look at trends in other places besides the y-axis. But I usually start with the y-axis and see if that lets me eliminate some things. So something like this, if you are, again, you have to be given a point in order to sketch the equation. So if this is going through the point one, one, this one's going to be similar to the one we just did. So again, we do want the solution to be a function, um, but it could be, it's going to be something involving this. And this is actually a circle. I know it looks like an ellipse, but because these are, if you solved this, you would get that it's a circle. Um, but the, the spacing is a little bit uneven. So depending on... Uh, so because this is giving us the point one, one, we really would only want to include the top half. 
if it's going through a point down here, we would want to include the bottom half. So it really depends on the point that it goes through. So for something like this, goes through the point um, negative 0.5, 0.4. So this one is going to be something like this. Oops. So it looks like it levels off here and then it goes up like that. And then this one is logistic. We're going to spend some time in um, 6.5 talking about logistic curves. So this one is logistic. It's this one is definitely one that if you wanted to sketch it, you would want to do a slope field because to solve it, you can do it. And we'll go over that later in this chapter, but it's not easy. So for this one, goes to the point four, two. So it's pretty steep here and then it has an asymptote and then it's steep through the middle, but starts to level off and has another asymptote up there. Okay, so then this is Euler's method. So this is graphically what we are doing with Euler's method. I'm gonna go over the procedure for it, but really what you're doing is you are taking the tangent line approximation at a particular point, and then you are moving along that line, finding a new point on that line, and then creating a new tangent line at that point, and then repeating that process over and over. So this is something that you would wanna do for something that it would be difficult to find what the actual uh, solution or the, what the actual function value is. So the examples that we're going to go through are ones that maybe you wouldn't want to do it in practice, but again, we're doing it for simpler equations um, so that you can kind of see how they work. So let me zoom in on this. So what you're doing is you are, again, starting at one particular point. You would have to be given what point that is. So you are, you're given a point to start with and you're finding the tangent line at that particular point. So what we would do is plug this into the differential equation. You're gonna get a slope of zero. You also are going to be given delta x. So graphically what that means is how far in the x direction are you going in order to figure out what your new point on that line is going to be. So you would have to be given what that delta x is. So we're using that to find delta y. And the way we get delta y is dy dx times delta x. So for this one, because uh, dy dx is zero, this is also going to be zero. And then we find a new point by adding delta x uh, by adding to delta x and to delta y. So we started at 0, 2. Uh, we started at 0, 2. We know the dy dx here is also 0. Um, so delta y is 0, which means that I'm not going any, I'm not going up or down in the y direction. So I'm not changing the y value at all. So my new point, delta x is changing, delta x is 0.5. Delta y is zero, so my new x value, or sorry, my new y value stays the same. So now I have this new point, 0.5 comma two, and I am plugging that into dy dx. So now dy dx is not going to be zero. It's going to be, um, I would probably keep it as a decimal. You can have it as a fraction. It's gonna be one fourth. So it's going to be one half divided by two. So then I do that times delta x. So to get delta y is always going to be this times delta x. And delta x does not change throughout the entire problem. So for this one, delta x is always going to be 0.5. So this is going to be 0.125. Now this is a big chart. I'm not actually going to fill out this entire chart because it's really tedious. And this is also not something that you would have to ever do this many times. Usually you would have to do it twice, maybe three times, but usually it's just going to be once or twice for Euler's method. So usually what the questions are asking you to do is to find, like for example, starting at zero two, find the new y value when x is equal to one. So that would be one example of something you would have to do for a question like this. So 
um, delta y is 0.125. I started at a y value of 2, so now my y value is 2.125. So that would be the answer if it was asking you for something like what is f of 1 or your approximation for f of 1. And then you could keep going. At this point, you're probably going to need a calculator. This part I was able to do without a calculator, and these are usually non-calculator questions anyway. Um, so you don't need to worry about filling out this chart, this entire chart. I usually make this chart for myself, though. I have the x, y, dy, dx, and delta y, and then I fill it out that way. Some, I think that helps as far as like being able to grade your work as well, because if you make a mistake, it's easier for me to find where you went wrong. So this is the slope field for something like this. So if you plotted a couple points on here, which I'm not gonna go through, you can plot them if you want, um, it should look like it's starting to follow the general shape of this. So this is in words, what you're doing with Euler's method. So you, again, are given a point that you are starting with. So you're always given where you're starting. And then we use whatever differential equation you're given to find the slope. Then you increase x by delta x. Again, that's always something you're given as well. And you need to find uh, delta y by doing dy dx times whatever your delta x is. And then increase y by delta y. Then use that new point and start with step 2. Do step 2 and 3 again as many times as it's, as it's asking you to do. So again, that's usually gonna be two or three. The questions are worded slightly differently depending on who is writing them. So your textbook might be a little bit slightly different than the way it would be on the AP test. And we'll do a lot of practice with it so you can see the different ways that it's worded. But that is something to be aware of that whoever is writing the question might word it slightly differently so making sure that you know how to do Euler's method so that when you see Euler's method in the problem, you know the chart to fill out. And I think that's going to really help you.